Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Third Planet Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined today by Comron Schuster. Hi, how are you guys doing? And hold on, let me adjust my microphone here so you guys can see me a little bit better. Okay, so uh, just an FYI, if you guys are watching on YouTube, the video version of this, that my webcam has been acting up lately and it might cut out in the middle of the video. So if that happens, um, you know, just letting you guys know. Um, so anyways, today me and Kamran are going to be going over the Heisei era of Godzilla. And if you did not have the chance yet, check out our review of the Showa era, which was our last podcast episode. It came out, I think the week before last, by the time this is getting posted. So, uh, yeah, I guess we start with Godzilla 1985 or as it was known in Japan as Godzilla, the return of Godzilla. Yeah, dude, that was. It was a good movie, and he had a very unique design with the, if you remember those teeth that just stick out. Yeah, yeah, and he's got the upper lip and that moves and everything. Um, I guess we could explain a little bit of the backstory of this movie. Um, I like this movie. I know a lot of people don't like it, um, but I think it's because we've only seen the American version, which is, again, like the original 54 version, not as good. Um, but the... After Terror of Mechagodzilla, they took off like nine years, I think. Yeah, because Terror was still in the 70s, and this is like mid-80s at this point. Yeah, so they took off about a decade from making Godzilla movies, and they came back with like a bigger budget. They modernized the look, uh, better technology and everything, and it really does show. And this movie, they never explain if this is a new Godzilla or if this is the original one. I think it is a new Godzilla. I think sure. they, they do address that 1950. So it's interesting because none of the show movies happen in this version, except mm-hmm. for the 54. They said the 54 still occurred. And this oh. like takes place after it, just like 30 years later. Yeah, we need to mention that this is a direct sequel to the original. Like all the Showa stuff is not canon according to this one, which is a good move. I think that's a, the smartest move that they could have done Yeah, with the Heisei era. Um, so I I love the suit in this movie. I don't think, I think it's one of Godzilla's very underrated designs. Uh, I love the roar. I think that the 85, 89 roar is like the best Godzilla roar that you can get. It's so good. Yeah. They, they really it's intimidating. Well. Yeah. yeah. They, there's actually some scenes in this movie where Godzilla looks kind of intimidating i mean the whole thing is it's interesting here because you're going from you know 54 we had the monster where he's destroying stuff and we talked about like in the last episode there's kind of like three arcs of show where it's the villain arc the neutral arc and then the hero arc that they kind of go through as you see the different versions of them Mm -hmm. and then here they kind of start over and it's like what happened before and it's like it's only the one where he's just pure destruction yeah he's a bad guy to that again Yeah. yeah um i don't remember the human side of the story because i can't speak to it too well because i've only seen the english version we have a very hard time getting the japanese version in the united states it's this is the only one that i've never seen released on dvd or anything i just watched it is it good it's good it's really good um it's very it's very comedic to it it's certain with certain characters but um yeah because it's got uh one dude's like researching everything and there's like a couple in it and they're trying to flee the city and yeah. people are trying to evacuate it takes some time but oh actually i do have i have read the japanese version because i have the dark horse manga of the book or mm. manga yeah so the uh i have it somewhere for hold on hold on for the people who are on video i can see this yeah right here um can you guys see it? It's like blurring in and out. I, I can uh, see his head. A okay, bit. Well, that's all you need to know. So this is uh, <laughs> this book was published by Dark Horse Comics, and this is the Japanese version of the movie. So there's no scenes with the American actors or anything. And it's actually this is the first manga I ever read. This is the only manga I've ever read, actually. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I if you can't get your hands on a copy of the Japanese version of the movie, read the Dark Horse uh, comic book. But uh, yeah, I uh, so from what I remember from the book, actually, yeah, there's a lot of scenes that they cut out in the American version, like the bugs eating the sailors, um, 
you know, there was a whole subplot with a reporter betraying the, the guy, the sailor's sister and everything. And uh, not, I think for just a story, he sold her out just so he can get a story for his newspaper and all that. Yeah. There's a lot more to the human side of the story that wasn't as, that wasn't as prevalent in the, uh, the English version. The English version has terrible dubbing. <laughs> I, I haven't watched awful. it in so long. Like yeah. uh, I want to say it's been three or four years. Uh, actually, no, it's been like actually five or six years since I've seen the American version. Like I was yeah. running through it with a bunch of friends, but now we've been going through the Japanese versions, which has been yeah. just amazing. And I do like the, you know, they, they up the ante for the characters a bit. Like you do feel in this specific run of movies, there is a lot more, focus on these characters and you yes, get a lot more of them to the point where you know one of them is in every single movie after this one not this one itself but all the others the other six like she's in yes. all of them and it's great but and i like how dark this movie is i like how dark yeah. and it's very that's what i love the first two we'll get to the next one which is actually i think probably one of my all-time favorite godzilla movies it might actually be my favorite um I love this just the dark dreariness of it all in these movies. They're they're really good. And speaking on the American one, the American version was written as a originally written as a comedy, and they brought back Raymond Burr from the King and the Monsters version of the '54 movie. And he, to his credit, you know, said he wasn't going to be a part of it if it was a comedy because he said it was a serious movie and he wanted it taken seriously. So. They rewrote it and you can kind of tell because it's the American scenes are pretty bad. And I don't think Raymond Burr deserved a raspberry though, a golden razzie, whatever they call it for uh, the role because they panned him pretty hard. And I think he does a good job because, because Raymond Burr is a, he's a really good actor. Uh, I did see some humor in the Japanese version, mm -hmm. but it wasn't toward, I mean, obviously since there's no white characters in it, yeah. It's purely just Japanese, but there is one character they utilize that is a really, really funny. It's like this uh, homeless Japanese guy. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and he just like goes into that cafe and Godzilla's there, and he's like, yeah. "What you want some of my food?" Yeah, he steal he steals all that food from like that really high class hotel and everything. He does help that couple get out of the building though that were left behind from the helicopter. Yeah, and then he goes to run away and. The thing that we we couldn't help but laugh at was it has that scene of him running. And it's like as if Godzilla is chasing right behind him. Yeah. But it's like you could kind of tell like the difference Did between the human and the monster in the background, just like the difference with the cinematography. Does he but die? He he I dies, but Godzilla doesn't crush him. He doesn't uh like let him on fire or anything. He uh. just kind of looks up and he's like, ah, uh, and then he just kind of like falls over and dies. Like it's like it's a, like Godzilla. He just looked at Godzilla and went, I am not living any longer. Yeah. And just kind of killed over. I remember <laughs> we the just way like oh he's dead. Godzilla appears in this movie is cool, but it's also just kind of how'd you not notice him standing right in front of you? Because a guy just walks out of a nuclear power plant and there's like a foot that goes in front of him. He looks up and it's Godzilla and he didn't even... It's like, how did you not notice him standing out there? It's just one of those moments where you look up, you see him, and you just kind of, without making any new face, you just completely no reaction yet. You just kind of turn around and just walk back inside. You don't say anything. You're just yeah. like, all right, well, it's happening. Yeah. And I was really... I like the fact that they started using animatronics in this movie uh, like, they, like they did in Jurassic Park. The problem is it's not very good. And I don't think yeah. that the, I don't think that the Japanese special effects had a lot of experience using animatronics at the time at Toho, at least. So, you know, obviously it was a new thing for them and it, it's not very good, but I do think that they, you know, they definitely got better. I know they use a lot of animatronics in the millennium series, which look great, but, uh, I really wish they would have kept trying a lot more with the animatronics for like up close, up close shots and everything. I think it would have really would have been good. Um, we do I'd... get the oh sorry, no go ahead. I was gonna say we do get the an awesome human ship, the Super X. Oh yeah, the Super X first gets uh, introduced in this movie, which are they're like reoccurring vehicles in uh, the Heisei series. He keeps destroying them over and over. I know, like he just destroys every single one of them. Um, this one had it... a whole crew too. It's like I know. You know uh, you get to see its evolution because in this one they're fighting them and it seems like they're standing a chance. Yeah. And once he takes them out, they literally burn alive, and you're like, oh, oh, yeah. the Super X is gone. Never mind. 
And don't get me wrong, it's a stupid looking ship in this movie. I always thought that they were dumb. The Super X were all dumb looking ships, except for the one in Godzilla vs. Destroyer. I thought that one was awesome. But Oh, yeah, it's like they're, I mean, it's like seven movies later, you know, like they yeah. finally kind of perfected it a bit in terms yeah. of in the movie timeline, but also outside in terms of production. Too. Exactly. I just never thought that the Super X, especially this one, was that cool looking. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is a good one. I think it's underrated. I think some. I think sometimes it gets a little bit too much hate and, you know, I, uh, I need to watch a Japanese version of it. And I do enjoy the, I think it's more of a nostalgia thing that I like the, uh, the American version because I used to rent it all the time on VHS. So I would just, I would honestly, cause I mean, uh, looking at this era, like I, I could say without a doubt, it's my favorite era. It's probably the era of Not like too. the best, most consistent movies because they all, you know, they all work together. They're all one world. Right, but with this one, you know, the other ones are just so good that it's not as good as those ones that come after it. To the right. point where there's even a gap between it and the next film. Like there's a five year gap between these yeah. movies being made, and the others all come like a year after the other. It's just like yeah. completely annual. They didn't really franchise uh, Godzilla again until uh, until Violante. Yeah, and but yeah. in terms of design, because we do see more of a consistent design after this. Uh-huh. We never really see one like this again where he has those like, I don't know, the teeth feel very iconic where they're like fangs almost. Yeah. And they do inspire, like they do feel like they're inspired somewhat from the 54 because like his teeth are a little jagged in that one. Yeah, It but looks like one, an updated 54 suit. Yes. And I would love to see it in another medium or people really utilize it in art because uh-huh. I always feel like it's just slept on so much. Yeah. that It's a... Yeah, you never see it anywhere. I, you know, you never see it in comic that design in comics or anything. It's always either the Millennium Godzilla that they go to or the Heisei Godzilla design. Yeah, uh, you rarely see any of the other ones. So I would love for Essay's Monster Arts to take a stab at the uh, eighty-five Godzilla suit because uh, I know NECA did one and NECA's one came out really good. But I also would like to see what Monster Arts would do with it, the <laughs> the suit as well. For sure. So yeah, I'd recommend checking it out. It's underrated. And uh, see both versions if you can. I know this movie is pretty hard to find because of licensing issues these days with this one for some reason. But if you can find it, go ahead. Uh, so the next one is my... I, I'm pretty sure this is my all-time favorite Godzilla movie, or at least top three. Godzilla versus Biollante. Because to me, it is Godzilla perfection, this movie. It's really good. And I honestly, yeah. after showing a lot of my friends from school all the movies... I know two of them, I'm pretty sure, were like, this is my favorite one. Yeah. Easily. It's, the special effects are great. The music's really good. The story actually isn't uh, that... The human side of the story isn't that bad. It's uh, It's got a really unique monster design. It's just a weird... It's a sci-fi movie. Like, that's all I... Can, it's science fiction at its best, this movie. Even the music takes such a turn because i will say there's a breakout song in this movie Uh that is so insane that you can just wars bio wars yes is so good Uh it takes all the just to talk about the song really fast it takes Uh the classic godzilla theme and just makes it 80s synth and rock like you have great guitarists this movie embodies the 80s i love it amazing 80s japan and what's crazy too is you know the Heisei era is the 80s and 90s, which is why I think I, I guess, get aligned with it so much because it's like I grew up in the 90s. I was yeah. born that at decade. It but... is our era of Godzilla. Yeah. And it's just these two, Godzilla, 19, uh, the Return of the Godzilla and Biollante are the only two 80s ones and they're five years apart. And then after that, the other five are just all throughout the first half of the 90s, pretty much like 90 through 94, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, this was this is kind of where it starts off though, where now you're getting annual and everything is gonna become fully consistent. Like we get Mickey in this. This is Mickey's first appearance. Oh yeah, Mickey Takusa, the uh the psychic girl. Yeah. So I think we should uh, explain a few things about the about what I remember from the production history. I think they had a contest. Excuse me, about uh I know that they have been trying to uh get this movie off the ground for a long time and they held a contest of 
to see who could write the best like story for it. And there was like a dentist who was a part-time sci-fi writer who wrote this story about a scientist creating like a rat fish hybrid that was like also part Godzilla. And there was a psychic girl in it. And they took that story and just changed. And they used that basic concept and changed it. So you, in this movie, they take Godzilla's cells and they combine it with a plant and you get like this plant Godzilla hybrid named Biolante. And the cool thing too here is they utilize the time gap and they connect it to the previous. This is where you finally see movies being fully connected because the way they get his cells is from the event of the first film in uh, 84, 85. And there, like you see it occur and that's where the Bowers theme takes place. You got like Mm -hmm. uh, the Japanese are collecting it and then American soldiers come out of nowhere and steal it or like American mercenaries or something. And then this other agent then kills them. <laughs> it's yeah. like a whole chain of events. But people are trying to get their hands on these Godzilla cells. And you find out like there's a scientist working on everything. And there's a bombing. His daughter dies. Yeah. And she kind of gets worked into the experiment. Yeah. And it's the human side. I love this story so much, though, because it makes so much sense that like the whole world is going to want a piece of what Godzilla's made out of because they want to study him and everything. So, you know, you get the, you get the American mercenaries trying to get the Godzilla cells. You get this other agent that's, that's out to get them. It's a very good human story. And it, it shows that like how these mega corporations are trying to get a hold of it too. Cause they want to like figure out how to use his cells and everything. There's the anti-nuclear bacteria uh, storyline that they do. That's really cool it's um it's all this it's a really cool story it really is it almost feels like a a cyberpunk godzilla movie or something it's just it's really cool i I can't say that enough it's um and then the design of bailante itself like she is just this amazing like first she starts uh, off as like a rose yeah and eventually they turn her into this awesome crazy looking like plant with teeth and venus flytrap type like yeah. uh vine tendril things and it's just a full-on like straight up monster and you know godzilla and violent they fight for a bit but it's more like a crazy thing because it's a plant fused with godzilla cells yeah so it's also it's... with the soul of a dead woman yeah it's pretty crazy and that's all really I could think about it. Yeah. And that scene where she first comes out of the ground in her final form and like she's moving towards him, it just looks so good. The special effects oh, in this yeah. movie are great. This is my favorite Heisei Godzilla design, too. The 89 suit is just perfection for me. It's definitely, I would say it's probably my second favorite, but I'll, I'll, I'll this era does have my favorite one for sure. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say so. At least I have regular Godzilla. Just because he uh, looks so aggressive. He's got the real buffed out chest and everything. He just looks, he looks mean in this movie. And it's, uh, yeah, the whole thing is good. That scene with him ri- rising out of the volcano. Is oh, that so was great. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with Mickey too, they really utilize her where she's not only connecting with Bailante, finding out that's like, dude that's your daughter in there and like she's talking to the scientist and saying like oh she like i'm kind of actually getting messages from her and stuff a little bit like i can understand a plant but yeah she also has a connection to godzilla to a point where she single-handedly diverts him from attacking a city like he literally walks up and she's on a platform and she just does like a telekinetic chess match with them or something and he just goes oh well you're here i'm gonna just go somewhere else i know the way he just turns around and just starts leaving is hilarious Um, it's so good and you're just like what the hell because the whole thing is like oh she's just in this for one movie she's just some kid that's a psychic and apparently like they liked her so much that they're like you're just gonna be in all of these yeah and you know i uh I think this has one of the most underrated scenes in the whole franchise when, uh, you know, so Godzilla's in this volcano and they're trying to figure out if he's trying to get out or whatever. And they have this school with a bunch of like psychic kids who can like predict the future. And they said, okay, so they all had the same dream and they asked them to color these pictures, draw these pictures of what they had a dream about. And they go in and they, uh, and Mickey Sakusa and everything go in and they ask, Okay, kids, what did you dream about? And they all hold up pictures of Godzilla just just in front of like a blaze of fire and the Godzilla theme kicks up. And it's 
it's one of the best scenes of the it whole is franchise. actually it's amazing and it's yeah. just like you know kid i love it too just because it made me think i'm like oh man kids really love godzilla yeah <laughs> and it's cool that like a whole school of psyche kids predicted godzilla's gonna come back and level everything which yeah. he does he really um, does I, I can't rec- recommend this movie enough, guys. This is, to me, one of the quintessential Godzilla movies. If Easily. If you were going to do, like, speed run through the movies, this is one of the essentials. I say the 54 movie, a couple of the show era movies, and then this one. And then yeah. uh, a couple of the other ones, too. Because this is, this is great. Top three Godzilla movies, easily, to me. It's really great. And it's yeah. like, I love it so much. It doesn't necessarily take the top just because there's some that just have more nostalgic value and sentimental value to me but Mm -hmm. it's so much so like I always recognized it to the point where I'm like I always like when I just showed some people recently like honestly like a few weeks ago I was like you guys are I want everyone to be here for this specific one because I know even though there's others I may like more I know everyone universally will love this movie because it is that amazing and Brandon I know you hate on Godzilla so much. And if you're listening to this, we're going to make you watch this movie someday. Cause I know this one would probably change your mind. Oh, I was, I was actually, I was just going to make him watch all of them. I was going to time up and have him watch all of them. We, we could do that too. So yeah, if you're listening, was... Brandon, this is, it's coming. We're coming for you. Yes. So um, yeah, I think that, like we said, can't recommend this one enough. And I think we can move this on to another one, which is, a movie that I still love. I still think that it is one of the best in the series, but I also don't think it's aged that well. And it's Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. We I just watched it last like last week. It's still fun. I it's still so, like, yeah, but it's a lot of nostalgia for me. I love that. So this is an interesting one because they take you know like Biolante is all, for all yeah it is the eighties Godzilla movie incarnate. Yeah, this is a night made in 1990. It's the first time we see one of the Showa era villains brought back. Yeah, and it's got awesome. It's so I loved this one for many reasons because it takes all these other things. It combines time travel. It combines mm-hmm. World War II, and it combines the Terminator all into one film with like monsters. And mm-hmm. you're just like, wait, what is this movie? Because that this is where it just gets off the rails. And by the way, too, I almost forgot, like, you also see, um, you know, another Super X in Biolante. It's just this one. Oh, yeah, is... that's right. The Super X 2. And it's uh, remote piloted this time. Yes. Because they're like, we don't need our pilots burning yeah. alive. I did and like it still, the... it still gets destroyed. I did like the idea that it, like, it can absorb Godzilla's uh, radiation from the atomic breath and then shoot it back at him, like, tenfolds. Oh, yeah, the mirror yeah. was really dope. But... Yeah, I thought that was a good idea. That was a good idea. But anyways, with this one... Um, it's really sad because they dump that real grittiness. They drop that real grittiness and the dark uh, cinematography and overall feeling of 1985 and Godzilla versus Biollante. They drop that for this movie and they go for a more futuristic feeling. And I much rather would have had them go on, continue with the same tone from Godzilla versus Biollante. I mean, this one definitely, whether intended or not, has a lot more humor to it. Mm -hmm. just in terms of just surely watching things from the future not to mention like this one in both versions has a white cast in it or at least like it has white people from the future (laughs) yeah we're we're gonna talk about that because this movie was actually pretty controversial (laughs) oh wasn't the the director even by ishiro honda gave him some crap right because it was like uh yeah it felt like this movie had anti-american sentiment just for showing uh them in like world war ii among like that yeah. Japan was like the leading nation of the future. There stuff. was a lot of anti-American, anti every other country but Japan in this country, and it got it got a lot of shit from the Japanese, and it got a lot of shit from uh, the Americans too for like the way it portrays people outside of Japan in this movie. Um, but I remember I, I was fine. <laughs> This is the first time. Yeah, it didn't bother me. Yeah, but... I was like, this isn't that good. I've seen worse. I mean, I if anything, I just forwarded it through those scenes of Godzilla. Because, like, the monster action is really good in this movie. Oh, yeah. um, this was my introduction to King Ghidorah. I didn't know who King Ghidorah was before uh, I saw this movie. Really? Yeah, because okay. I remember we would get the, the TV guide, and my dad was like, hey, there's a Godzilla movie on with a villain that I've never heard of. 
And I was like, oh, King Ghidorah. He goes, oh, well, let's watch it. And I remember watching it thinking it was the greatest thing ever. And then I remember throughout the years I watched it, I was just like, this has not aged as well because I thought it was amazing when I was a little kid. And I'm looking back at it, I'm like, this has not aged as well as I as I remember it, in the, especially in the special effects department. And the dubbing's so bad. Oh, God, the dubbing's bad. Any of the scenes with the American soldiers is awful. <laughs> I think that's why I'm having like more brighter perspectives of everything because I've been just watching everything in Japanese recently. Yeah. Like that's the last version I've seen of everything for so far. Yeah. And it's hard to get the Japanese versions of these movies. It's getting well, it easier been. now. It's getting easier now, but it, for the before you'd only get the American dubs on like a bare bones DVD release. And yeah. And I, I, I think I probably need to watch a Japanese version of this movie because like the American scenes are so bad. Dude, those white dudes speak pretty fluently in Japanese. Like, they actually do a good job. Yeah, I heard a lot of the people that they got were, like, uh, English teachers and everything for uh, for the actors, for the, the white actors in this movie. So uh, that's why you never see them in anything else. Yeah, and so th- this movie is just interesting in the fact that they have alternate origins for these monsters now. Especially, yeah. I mean, that's supposed to be implied once again. Like, I'm pretty sure it's implied that there's the 54 Godzilla and then the one from 84 on is like a different one. Mm-hmm. And there are multiple potentially. And Oh that... my God. I just realized it's, <sighs> this really does mess up the timeline. This movie. Yeah. Cause he's a dinosaur. Yeah. The because... Godzilla saw on an Island. That's like kind so... of. Yeah. Okay. So they very obviously killed Godzilla at the end of 54 and the 84 one is a new one. So if they went back and wiped out the 54 one, the, the one from 84 would still exist. I think that's why he still survives beyond the time lapse. If you saw like um, when, when they, it, so they do try to, that's the thing, the whole thing with the people from the future, they're like, we have to stop Japan and have it gets this, have it get destroyed. So it doesn't become so cool in the future. Yeah. It doesn't become uh, a superpower. They do a crazy thing where, they have these little future creatures called Dorats. And this yeah. is the one and only time you get Dorats. And I, I dude, I love Dorats so much. Like, I'm just like, Dorats they were created great, to but... sell toys. But, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, they were. If I, if I find someone in Japan, I might, I'm not going to lie. I might be like, yo, give me a Dorat. But like, they are these three little creatures that they switch with Godzilla. The whole thing is like, Godzilla protects these uh japanese soldiers in world war ii from these americans he's and, a, and he's a leftover dinosaur it does kind of go with the uh 1954 theory that dr yamane had and he's definitely not invincible like uh-huh. uh the americans try to stop him and they actually do uh injure him a lot yeah they kill him in this movie yeah and he likes it's hilarious because the amount of t- the way they kind of just repeat footage a bit but it's just all the soldiers on the island die by way of trees falling on them like straight up he just knocks trees over every single american soldier which is hilarious but because it's like it just keeps repeating and you're like how do they keep getting hit by all these trees but uh you know yeah he gets taken out by like battleships but they're supposed to be like oh this is where things switch and the nuclear testing that happens here turns him into godzilla yeah godzilla sort and all of the soldiers that are there are like we appreciate everything done and there's this whole thing uh where they go back and there's interviews there's like a manga artist and stuff uh, or like a, a writer and he has like a book on godzilla and you, you inter- would think that these soldiers would have gone back and told everybody there's a dinosaur living on the island out in the, the it's ocean. like a weird conspiracy thing where they're all just like yeah. kind of loyal to godzilla where yeah. they're like he saved us so therefore we'll always have his back or something even and though he like came back and decimated the city in 19 the main like the the ceo of the company just gets yeah. like uh, oh yeah, yeah that was uh that, dude, was, that was insane he gets atomized but yeah so yeah. they switch him with the door at so then you get Ghidorah instead and it's like such a weird intro because before you know Ghidorah in showa is an alien monster. yeah this you... one he it's like you don't really know where the Dorats came from yeah i think they're implied that like they're genetically engineered pets from the future do you like the this origin like do you like Ghidorah being an earth monster or a, or an alien more i like alien more yeah so do i i do and i just enjoy dorats 
per- personally. <laughs> like it's like separated from Ghidorah. I'm just like, oh boy, Dorats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they're just they're just funny. And otherwise, origin wise, completely in the background of Ghidorah specifically. Easily mm-hmm. the show Alien just makes 20 times more sense. And it's like yeah. it, it's just simpler too. You're just like, wait, it's three little cuddly creatures turn into this thing. All yeah. right. But I uh I wish they would have saved Ghidorah for the last Heisei movie. Cause I always, Ghidorah is his like ultimate enemy. And like, I love Destoria and I, I think you could have probably done Ghidorah and Destoria in the last movie. I think so for me, the reason I'm fine with this is because like I, we've had so much Ghidorah already. Like he was in what four mm-hmm. movies uh, in the show era out of 15. So nearly a third of them, just one monster. Mm-hmm. and we get them in this one and really for the most part the reason i love the heisei era so much is because it's brand new monsters as well you're not yes. getting all yeah. the same ones these are all original ones the only one that's returning is really besides godzilla you're getting Ghidorah, rodan and mothra which ironically are the ones that and are mecha like... godzilla and mecha godzilla of course yeah uh, but otherwise none of the others oh return. and mogira i was forget mogira was uh, in a different movie before this that, yeah, Mogir was in a show as in um, Mysterions, but yeah. definitely a different, completely different everything yeah, for yeah. them. Yeah. But which interesting movie. I yeah. love the fashion. But yeah. uh the this version of Ghidorah, like I'm cool with it. It's definitely not as memorable just because Ghidorah doesn't really have much of a point besides just like, hey, we made this monster to destroy Japan. Mm-hmm. And then he's there, Godzilla fights him, he dies, and then yeah. you get and the he's awesome. Under- He's under mind control a lot of it too, though. And that's what it kind of steps on the whole rivalry that they have, Godzilla yeah. and Ghidorah. And that's kind of sucks. And I know where you're going, though. You're all right. Mecha King Ghidorah is amazing. That's why also it was really cool because this one isn't the same Ghidorah. And I don't think you need him to be that big rival because, like, you, they use him as a tool, if anything. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, there's bigger fish in this era. Like, yeah. Ghidorah is not the big one anymore. And I think that's why I also love all the bigger movies because they, I don't know, they, the monsters there stand out so much more because maybe it's because the story and there's more investment in budget, mm-hmm. but everything feels just like deeper with everything. But we'll get to those as we come to them. But yeah, I'm looking uh, at my, this Godzilla book, comic book that I have has a list of all the Godzilla movies at the end. And I'm looking through where, uh, what's after this one? Because I was, oh, getting... it's uh, Godzilla versus Mothra. Okay, yeah, it's Mothra, yeah. then it's Mecha Godzilla, then Space Godzilla. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this one too. I, I, so this is I, what I loved with the humor was all the future stuff with uh, the Terminator was really, really, I oh, love yeah. the, I love the, the future jetpack type things where they just kind of float and they're just like, they're, it's not even an actual jetpack. It's just like a thing that helps them levitate up and down yeah. and they have ridiculous sound effects for them and they're just really fun. And then the Terminator himself, like you, you could tell Japan's like, they saw the James Cameron movies. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, there's like a robot from the future. We got to do that. And they do. And it's just the dude that. This is kind of the same era that Terminator 2 came out, right? Same year? It was, I think so. For Terminator 2, yeah. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Because Terminator and 2 ruled the world for a while. It did. It was, yeah. And okay. they they do it so, like, there's at one point a car chase. The dude is running and they just do crazy effects to make know, it look like so he's running stupid. alongside the car. It's so dumb, but it's so good. And it, the, it's yeah. like, this is just a fun one because the Terminator is like smiling. He yeah. looks over at them like, hey, what's up? Runs past them and then stops the car. But like he gets reprogrammed and held, like becomes actually an ally. And there's like yeah. all this crazy. It, there's awesome action in this movie in terms of the human standard because you have like a yeah. future fight where he's fighting all these dudes. But music's really good too yeah the, the music oh my god the turning music is so much fun because yeah. it just pumps you up for his chases but yeah. yeah like everything about it yeah it's it's very campy it's very pulpy yeah. uh but that i would say even though it doesn't age as well as you'd like it still remains one of its strengths where at yeah. least for sure like i said this era doesn't have a bad film it's just all a good time it's just yeah. some are just ab- substantially like quality better but and uh each one makes you smile <laughs> the best my favorite part of the movie is just when the guy says kill it king Ghidorah," and king Ghidorah's theme pops up as he starts attacking godzilla it's so it's so good in their first fight and uh the Ghidorah I, sounds I, are also different in this one too they changed his sound effects oh yeah i like i like his roars better i like a king Ghidorah's design in this movie is like that's my favorite king Ghidorah design um i uh i do like how the whole plot of the movie is like well we need to get rid of godzilla and then 
King Ghidorah shows up. Like, we need to get rid of King Ghidorah. So let's make another Godzilla to fight King Ghidorah. They do that. And then they realize they got to get rid of Godzilla. Like, immediately it's the after. best. It's so it's like, good. They shoot themselves in the foot so many times in this movie. It's hilarious. And the we end. got we got cat we got this we got we have all these rats. So we got these snakes to get out the rats, but now we have all these rats and uh, snakes. So then yeah. we gotta it's just uh it's like that whole chain of events. Yeah, and the ending of this movie is great when Godzilla wakes up at the bottom of the ocean, like his eyes glow up and everything, and yeah. Oh yeah, so cool. dude, it's it's so cool. And too, like the whole thing with Mecha King Ghidorah was just awesome and it like I'll we'll talk about it in like what two movies of uh, what that does later on and what it leads to yeah it's cool but the way that sets that up so good it makes a lot of sense uh yeah. and then the future thing of like the woman from the future is like the descendant of the author and the whole time you're thinking so the author is st- hitting on her and you're so like this stupid. is kind of <laughs> It's, it's so hilarious. stupid that that is not a good plot twist to put in there after you think that they're hitting on each other it's a I don't know. The whole... It could be worse if you watch <laughs> <Yeah>. Futurama. <laughs> it could also be where you can watch Star Wars. Uh, that's, that's, that's... <laughs> so yeah, I uh, I would still recommend this one. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It hasn't aged as well as I, th- as, as I thought it would, but it's still a lot of fun. And especially if you're just like wackiness and Terminator, you're going to have a good time. Yeah, it's one of the better. It's again, just it's a pure sci-fi movie, sci-fi cheese. And uh, the next one is Godzilla vs. Mothra Battle for Earth. Godzilla is useless in this movie. He does not serve any point to the plot. You can it, remove him from this movie and it would not make a difference. It, it's funny because this movie, you know, you bring back Mothra. And mm-hmm. what was interesting here is they go, what if we made a dark Mothra? And yeah. it's like, what is it? Batter the destroyer of worlds, right? Or destroyer he's, one of of the, he's one of the cooler uh, monsters, I think, in this in yeah. the era. He's really, he's underrated too, I think Batter is. He's really and, awesome. The cool thing too here is, you know, you get a larva monster that's like Mothra, but just evil looking. And same thing goes through the transformation and it's like a a darker version of Mothra coming out. And it looks really awesome, the design of Batra, because he's just a lot more aggressive, of course, just not necessarily repulsive, but it's just like edgy, dark, all that kind of stuff Yeah, in in terms of the design. And Godzilla really doesn't come in until later because it's like they're... He just isn't shows it, up. Isn't it Mothra and Batra are just fighting each other for the most part? Yeah, this movie is very much a Mothra and Batra movie with Batra just sh- or Godzilla just showing up every once in a while just to to fight everybody because he feels like it. So. It's weird too because it's they, they fight each other the minute Godzilla comes and just starts kicking the shit out of them. They, it's like Batra is like, I know I'm gonna destroy the earth, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not going to destroy the Earth anymore. We're gonna we're gonna work together we're to fight be Godzilla. Friends. And yeah, I love when they like first like become like allies. Godzilla just like kind of roars and he's just like, nah. I think he's afraid yeah. of uh, the first Mo- the Mothra versus Godzilla movie happening again, where he just gets webbed and falls I, into the ocean. <laughs> I hate. That's what I love. We're gonna get to GMK because that's one of my another one of my favorite Godzilla movies. I love watching Godzilla just absolutely annihilate Mothra in that movie because she always ends up winning somehow in his movies in the movies where he fights her. And this is one of them. Uh, you know, Godzilla takes Batra with him, but yeah. So yeah. Bat- Batra does not make it out. Uh, yeah, but Mothra, make it Mothra out. lives in this one, which, mm-hmm. cause you know, there's almost every movie Mothra does die, but there's like, there's like three Mothras or two Mothras. There's like yeah. multiple Mothras. So it's just like, Oh, hey, how's it going? I'm yeah. back this one was pretty brutal the way batra dies godzilla pretty much just takes a chunk out of his neck it's pretty gory yeah yeah and like, like bleeds flying all over bugs yeah. yeah um do you like mothra's design in this movie i thought it was interesting it was much more i mean it's more vibrant i guess you could say because you yeah. know it's a, it's a later age they've had a lot of time to do this because you know the last time you've seen mothra was Honest, because Mothra's not in any of the later ones. I think, what was it? Uh, In terms of her full-on moth form, you don't see her since Godzilla versus Ibira, right? Ibira's like the last time you see the moth, and then the last time you see Horror of the Deep. Oh, Ebera, yeah. Um, Because then you see Larva Mothra and Destroy All Monsters. After that, that's it. Yeah, it's all the other movies, yeah. So this is a long space where it went from the 60s to 90s. So you're looking at almost a 30 year difference here uh in terms of the design 
and you know it's updated of course but i i think they did a well done job especially like i mean i got the toy and i was happy with it so i was like when did i was a you, kid so i thought did it was you good. did you have the trend masters uh, mothra i had the what were they all it was whatever line had everything yeah uh, it was a, that was a trend masters one in the 90s with probably, always yeah. making Godzilla and everything. Oh, I still got them. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. You always have to super glue the tail every now and then. Yeah. My cousin had that one. I always wanted to get one too. Um, yeah, no, there was a lot of cool Godzilla toys that came out in the 90s from uh, Trend Masters. But uh, yeah, this is a, this movie's a lot of fun. Like I said, Godzilla is just uh, useless in the movie. He doesn't yeah. serve any purpose. It's kind of funny. He's like a Frank and always stunning like so anyway i just showed up and started blasting <laughs> that's really what it's he is actually that is the this is of all the movies this is that yeah. movie and it's funny too because it it is of the seven the least godzilla movies so for all intents and purposes it is the most missable one if you needed to mm-hmm. it's still like if you like mothra this is a great yeah. mothra movie. it does it does suck though because this is godzilla versus mothra that's an iconic yeah. and they finally did the name switch because like in the yeah. it's funny looking at him in the show era it's whenever it's him versus a monster and he's the bad one it's the yeah. other monster's name first king kong mothra yeah both of them are versus godzilla it felt now... like godzilla was always guest starring in other people's movies before he really took off yeah, and now it's different where it's like, yeah. oh, cool. And even now with an, an American film, it's like, yo, Godzilla versus Kong, take that, baby. But, yeah. yeah, and uh, it's a, I don't think this one's as good as the original Mothra versus Godzilla. That one is much more memorable just in terms yeah. of the, I don't know, just the command Godzilla makes because it, yeah, just it just does a really good job there. And it's before they're really even establishing Godzilla as a, like, franchise yeah Mm because it's still yeah the only he only had two movies and it's just this and king kong that he's like kind of jumping into as well but yeah yeah not much to say honestly in this one this one's like kind of the list remember of course like i said like mickey is in this one as well just like in king adora she's in all three she's in all of them uh she really doesn't do much in this one i think she just really talks to the because the fairies are in this one of course yeah uh, still the fairies are the ones that are communicating to the people about like oh mother is doing this bathroom is going to help i mean Bat- batra is going to help and stuff so yeah it's just all that kind of stuff um this one's... yeah I'd, th- I'd say you could probably skip this one honestly if if you wanted to only watch it if you want to yeah it's uh, out of all seven i would say this is the one i've probably seen like the it's probably the longest i've seen out of all of them it's mm-hmm. been like the span of time for this one specifically i yeah. would say it's got one of the best openings though with the meteorite oh, yeah. landing next to godzilla and it's just like you know volcanic fire behind godzilla as he's like you know roaring and the title screen comes up that's one of the best uh godzilla openings but uh so the next one is the best godzilla opening well it's not even godzilla's opening but it is one of the best openings the the mecha gods yeah we're about to oh my god so so uh, are we jumping into the next one now or uh yeah i think we can so yeah like i said watch it if you want it's it's fun but it's not recommended if you're trying to burn through all it's not needed that much um yeah i guess because they even unless you want to basically run through all high say together it's just like a whole yeah it's a fun movie though it's not yeah not as memorable as it i think it should be but and uh, one more thing i do james rolf the angry video game nerd had the best description for this mothra he was just like mothra always looks like a fluffy butterfly piece of shit and then (laughs) this is like oh man i wish i did i like insect mothra i don't like the whole like fluffy you know like plush toy looking mothra i think i've just always had a negative view of mothra only because as a kid i would get angry because godzilla just like gets got by mothra every time so i was like yeah. stupid bug <laughs> attacking yeah. my lizard <laughs> i like showa mothra and i like the millennium mothra i thought was those are the best versions but so anyway i guess on to godzilla versus mecha godzilla also known as godzilla versus mecha godzilla 2 also known as godzilla versus even though this isn't in canon with the last one and this is also has the title godzilla versus super mecha godzilla um i just i, I just call it godzilla one. versus mecha godzilla 2 <laughs> i'm pretty sure this is the one i've seen the least out of the heisei era this one so i remember uh because they didn't really have the heisei on tv that much because yeah. like they were recent and you really only saw the show a lot i just yeah. remember getting the mecha godzilla toy 
especially this and one. Then, you didn't see this one on TV a lot. It was always yeah. Godzilla versus King Ghidorah and Godzilla versus Mothra, and then the last two that were always on. And I I was surprised because I, I would look at my toy and I have like the Heisei toy of Mechagodzilla and I'd be watching the movies and it's like, you know, show up Mechagodzilla and I'm just like, I don't, the, I don't get it. Doesn't make any it. sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense <laughs> until the, later. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, this design is amazing. Yeah. But the, what design do you like more? The show or the Heisei? Everyone loves the classic, just like titanium tin. Yeah. But I just, when you really watch this movie, you just fall in love. But also, I, I honestly, I can't think of a bad Mechagodzilla because no, each one is just amazing in its special way. Like this one does an amazing job of uh, just making it epic. And like the fact that it's controlled by people, whereas like uh, the original one, it's like crazy. It's this insane, um, undefeatable villain. Yeah. And then in the you know millennium, you got Kiru, and he's actually like called Kiru, and it's like this crazy mind thing. And that it, one is really good. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not a big, I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the millennium era. Whereas like the two Mecha Godzilla movies are probably the strong points of it for me. Yeah, uh, where I do enjoy those specifically for more so honestly Mecha Godzilla, yeah. uh, which I don't normally say. Uh, the only bad Mecha Godzilla design I would say, of course, is the freaking uh, the anime one. No, I was going to say Ready Player One. Oh, uh, I didn't see the one on Ready Player One. It's um, it's kind of weird. They they make their own design, but I don't, I don't like I don't like it. It's weird. But yeah. uh, they so I these three movies like Mechagodzilla two and the two forward. I don't know why, but I always I refer to these three as the high trinity of the Godzilla movies because it's like it's like a it's almost like its own trilogy because you get of course like this movie gives you a second Godzilla, a baby Godzilla. And oh yeah, baby Godzilla's in this one. I forgot. As a person that has always, it's like, oh, you know, it's like I've never really been fond of Mothra, but I've always just kind of despised Minya. I just can't, yeah. I can't do Minya. And like having this nice actual, like, oh, it's like actually a, a smaller Godzilla, but it's yeah. like it makes sense. It's a sad and, ending too, the way yeah. he's got to like go to with his father and everything, because he doesn't want to go with his father. He yeah, he wants to stay with the people. He's like, I yeah. made friends here, Dad, and one of them talks to my mind. Yeah. And, but like, it's the trilogy of like these two together now, and that's why I call it like the High Trinity Plus. Yeah. Besides these movies themselves, these three films have the most iconic high detailed quality posters for a film i have yes. ever seen it in my entire all life the heisei all of the heisei godzilla movies 84 to destroy i have amazing hand-painted posters they're i mean all just beautiful great but, and it's like they're all amazing all seven of them but for some reason these three specifically just shine as these amazing beacons so much so i think it's either yeah. mecha gods i think mecha godzilla mecha george godzilla lucas has it in his George Lucas has a frame by Godzilla in the Lucasfilm lobby. Yeah. Like it's that good. Yeah. Um, but it's uh it's they're so amazing beautiful. posters. Definitely look it up. Yeah. Just look up uh straight up like Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla 2 or yeah. just Heise era posters, and they are absolutely amazing. I actually yeah. uh, I'll talk about the one I have later because it's not the movie yet, but uh you know, this movie has what I would consider whereas uh, Godzilla vs. Biollante has probably the best, uh, uh, I guess, music intro and like just the craziest action intro. Yeah. This one just has the best like featurette intro of just like yeah, the them building Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, and th just the detail because it's like you never get that much detail uh, in terms of like a Mecha version before. Like the other two, they just kind of come midway through the movie or they're disguised. This right. one's straight up like oh, you're kind of seeing the backstory of it. And everything and the theme itself this is where the music just gets insane like this is probably one of the also best songs in the hisa era is the mecha godzilla theme yeah it is um you want to start you want to turn the light on in your room real quick oh yeah, it's yeah getting dark yeah yeah keep talking i'll be right back okay uh real quick i'll go into the production uh some of the pre-production for this movie um so originally Godzilla was supposed to die in this movie and his son was supposed to live on, but they decided to, to, to uh, save that for later. So that's a fun fact about it that I was just saying, Conrad, because Conrad just came back that they were originally going to kill Godzilla off in this movie. Oh, really? Yeah. I he, actually know that. 
he was supposed to die at the end and uh his son was supposed to live on for the next ones but they decided to save that okay yeah and because they find out that godzilla for some reason has another brain in his leg that's so random dude it was so (laughs) the Uh, the the anatomy in this one was just yeah it's very interesting and it's just, it's cool too because you know what is it it's infant island right is that the yeah it's it... infant island where they find it and uh you know because the island's like a wasteland of... they never explain where the godzilla egg comes from too it's two twin it's so this is the crazy part it's two eggs and one egg is the baby godzilla the other egg is the heisei version of rodan yes so it's like they're half brothers which doesn't make any sense because i'm like where the hell do these two eggs come from i mean neither did this was it twins with danny devito and arnold schwarzenegger so it's kind of like good that. point yeah, yeah. So it's- oh yeah rodan's in this movie um i love this version of rodan yeah because well, uh, a- it's like it's not only just rodan this is fire rodan yeah and well you get a good so- rodan fight too and like you know i think that rodan is one of the more underrated godzilla opponents when it comes to that those kind of classic matchups because i love a good godzilla versus rodan fight yeah and you know it's funny because like rodan and godzilla fight for a bit and godzilla just knocks him out and it turns out yeah. his blast radiates him further yeah to him getting the firepower which was honestly awesome but yeah he's really is the closest thing to another godzilla you got in this uh timeline yeah and, and even in the previous one too i mean all the other monsters never really well i guess he doesn't have the fire or dan ability in like Showa era no. there's nothing really close to godzilla besides minya but you still uh, could you still could kind of watch the original mothra and the original rodan movie before the heisei movies yeah, uh, yeah, especially you, Rodan it, is such a good standalone, honestly. Oh, it is. Yeah, and you can't really... They don't write it in a way that makes it not canon, you know? They don't say anything to say that, like, oh, we have it. We don't know who this monster is. Like, they kind of... You can still kind of watch it. It honestly almost fits in, like... Yeah, it just yeah, it just kind of fits in uh, yeah. whenever you want it to. But. And I guess... Going back to the Mothra movie real quick, because I forgot to mention this, there was a Mothra did eventually spin off into her own trilogy. I have it on Blu. I, I've had. I yeah. got everything on Blu. Yeah, those movies are garbage. I haven't okay. watched them yet. I was gonna. I, uh, we're watching them after GBK comes out, so in yeah. April. I, I was so mad because they're not in canon with uh, the Heisei movies, even though they're considered part of the Heisei era. I was like, I wish that they would have continued that Mothra story, because it's the same design. It's like the dubbing is awful. It oh is- man. Oh, it's really, really bad. Like they're literally, they'll have like dialogue after they finish talking. I saw like I was looking yeah. at the back because it shows you know like you know how it always has the little symbols with all the different monsters in the movie. Yeah, I saw like what, there's like three different Mothras in it, and I'm just like, yeah. what, there's like Lion Mothra, like Aqua Mothra, Fairy there's, Mothra, and I'm like, a, what? there's a ton of Mothras. King Ghidorah comes back in one of them. I, I saw in one of them. I was like, wait, how is Ghidorah in this? And there's like a yeah. there's like a proto Ghidorah in it too, or something. Or yeah, it's a whole different thing. It's a uh, I'm sure the Japanese versions of those movies are better, but I just remember thinking like, wow, the American versions of these movies are not very good. But it's its own universe, right? Yeah, it's not okay. in canon with any which is unfortunate. But anyway, back to yeah, yeah, yeah. Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Um. This is the start of the yeah. Godzilla Force, right? Yeah, G Force. I think this yeah. is a. Is this the first one with G Force? Yeah, I it is. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is why. This is huh. also like these. All three of these movies are connected. You have also. Um, it's kind of like believe, the early version of Monarch. Yeah, because you have Mickey is pretty much back again, of course, and mm-hmm. she is communicating with the baby Godzilla. Like she's the one that's like doing all the stuff with the like all the uh, telepathy with him yeah and making things understandable there's like uh if i remember correctly isn't there a guy that has like uh he's like an inventor or something he has like little uh aircrafts that he can utilize yeah like. yeah there's garuda which like hooks up to because i have the sh figure uh figure of uh, mecha godzilla and it has the garuda and all that there's and a Garuda's like the spiritual successor to super x pretty much yes it they just is. don't call it super x they're just like yeah it's they should have just called now. it they should have just called the super x four yeah or three um yeah because there's no there's none in king Ghidorah. there wasn't one in mothra either right no the super x doesn't come back till destroria yeah and uh this i it's cool that this guy that this mecha godzilla came from mecha king Ghidorah. 
Like they took the technology. From- that was the that, yeah the callback there where it shows yeah. them like finding the future tech that they utilized and they're like yeah. oh we can make something to fight Godzilla here. Yeah. So um, this movie's yeah this movie's fun. I just I haven't seen it in a long time from the memories I do have, but I remember the music being really good. And I also don't, I there's one thing I don't like about the Heisei era movies, and I think that this is the start of it is spam beaming or they call it a beam spamming or whatever where godzilla just he uses his atomic breath way too much Mm. in service of actually fighting and that's how he beats him it's just kind of gets old after a while i think it's in this one because you're seeing now monsters that are stronger where you can't i guess utilize um yeah just regular combat with especially with mecha godzilla you're getting somewhat of a callback to the original where it's like this unbeatable monster to the point where he for all intents and purposes, one on one, Mecha Godzilla beats Godzilla. Yeah, and it's not until Rodan comes and helps him out. Yeah. It's and... pretty violent too. He really did, like messes up Godzilla a couple times in this movie. It, it, he pretty much does kill Godzilla, huh. but Rodan's sacrifice, like it's like Fire Rodan, literally merges with. Uh... Actually, this is I think what they got from the American King of Monsters movie. Yeah, that's where they got the idea with. Uh, yeah, was, Fire Rodan literally just like a, a kind of is dying so he lands on godzilla and godzilla absorbs all his energy and becomes like a much more powerful monster and then basically takes out my godzilla for the most part but yeah um one thing i forgot i think we forgot to mention in all the previous movies is that um godzilla versus biolante and godzilla versus king Ghidorah have two of the coolest uses of godzilla's new ability that they added in the in these movies which is the nuclear pulse yes oh that was so cool when king Ghidorah's got his head wrapped around godzilla and he does the pulse and like just shoots him back oh it's so cool it's really rad and that's like the whole thing here is i think uh with a lot of the toys they had some of it called supercharged godzilla or something yeah uh where it's like oh he looks even more cool and atomic and everything else so i always felt like i, I don't think we talked about it but the supercharged always felt like it uh originated from the original godzilla versus mecha godzilla when he gets all the lightning oh, yeah. and stuff and you yeah. literally see him getting a supercharge and you're like oh and he uses the super all the missiles just come out on their own it's so it's so corny but it's, it's so cool it's so good yeah uh but yeah back to the i think we could probably Mecha. wrap up godzilla versus mecha godzilla unless you got anything else to say um not really uh but i would say definitely i would highly recommend it just because like i said it gets into a full like kind of a trilogy within the yeah. Heisei era that you just I I love these three so much I would say don't miss these ones. Yeah, it adds a lot to the time. It adds a lot to the whole like mythology of Godzilla and everything in in this movie. It adds a lot to the universe. Um, yeah. So one for this is it Space Godzilla after this? Yep, it's Space Godzilla. Uh, this and is considered to be the worst one out of the series, it, and I don't. What? Yeah, a lot of people think that this is the worst Heisei movie. I don't think so. It does so much good. So. I honestly, this is probably my second favorite of the era. Yeah, I'll be sec- honest. Second best uh, Heisei Godzilla design to me. I this is probably my favorite one. I think this is actually yeah. my favorite Godzilla design. It's a definitive um, Heisei. Godzilla. It is the yeah. This is honestly when anyone would ever ask me, they go Godzilla. The Space Godzilla Godzilla is the one that comes up in my mind. Yeah, it's uh, kind of to be honest. It's it's perfection of the the heisei suit um when you, when you get all the toys i feel like at least at that time it was the space godzilla toys you were getting like it was yeah. those that design of godzilla so that was the one that kind of just became the one in my mind when i would see godzilla right um so this movie there's an alien version of godzilla they use the leftover parts from mecha godzilla to. to make uh oh, right. mogira to, yeah mogira Stupid design on Mogira. Oh, oh that... you didn't. I love the because they they do I... land. Mo... He's oh, cool, a... but I think he looks like a chicken. He de- he definitely looks odd, but uh, yeah, it's because I love that they have two teams. So it's like two. Uh, they have a ground team and an air team. Yeah, and the air team basically is the substitute for. Uh, I don't think they have a Gruda in this one, right? Do they? No. Okay. Yeah. So you have the air team, and it's like half, and it's just basically another spiritual successor to Super X and Gruda. Yeah. And then there's a cool drill tank that can like go underground and it could do all this cool stuff, but combined they turn into this awesome mech that 
I love the design so much for that's like Mogira. And yeah, it's based off of a Showa alien monster mech that they had before, but he's got like laser drill laser hands. It's like they open up into lasers. Uh, he's just got a lot of, it's just different. He's like a different version of Mechagodzilla, but it's its own thing that stands yeah. alone. You like that scene where they're flying through space and you see like all the asteroids hanging on strings and everything when they're fighting space Godzilla in space. It's so funny. It's crazy. Yeah, because yeah. they go to intercept and space like space Godzilla. Speaking of like Mogira is created from Mechagodzilla. Space mm-hmm. Godzilla is created from Biolante. Yeah, there's two they give two explanations for some reason. Um, so the first one is that like they said there's two instances where Godzilla cells go into space. One was when Biolante went into space, and then the other one was when Mothra went into space at the end of uh at the end of Godzilla versus Mothra, and she makes a cameo. The twins and everything make a cameo appearance. appearance There's a fairy Mothra movie. in this one, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't make any sense though because technically, wouldn't Biolante not exist anymore? It's supposed to be. You see, in the end of Biolante, the, the... No, no, I'm talking about like the the timeline thing in the time travel thing where they wiped out that Godzilla in Godzilla versus. I don't think they do because the whole thing was they thought they wiped him out and he was still there the whole time oh but they wiped out that okay no wait they wiped out that godzilla the original one but there's still the second one that came in 84 yeah he's still literally in the ocean they're like what the hell is that and it's like oh my god he's still been alive this whole time and it's just like oh crap so it's still yeah it still counts for everything not to mention like you know you still got mickey there doing her stuff with everything else beforehand but she's even in this uh she is one of the pilots of mogira no she's not she was, was one he? of the pilot. No, she was one of the pilots of uh, Mecha Godzilla. That's what it was. Okay, I couldn't yeah. remember if it was Mecha Godzilla or pi- I do like that they tie this movie back to Godzilla versus Biolante, though, because one of the characters who gets killed in Godzilla versus Biolante, his best friend in this movie has like a vendetta against Godzilla, and he's out to kill him. That's one of the Mogir. Pi- yeah, he's yeah. like, I'm gonna kill him this time, and like it's gonna happen. Uh, yeah. And you know, you see the baby Godzilla has grown up a bit. Like he's just more, he's got that Godzilla chub in this one. He's a lot cuter. They definitely did that for the toys. I would say. I Um, wish that they would have kept the design from Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. It would have made more sense. They do look definitely very different. I cannot see this baby Godzilla growing up into something that looks like his dad. Yeah, no, they they were definitely Uh, like, Oh, we got to sell those little, those little cute little plushes and whatnot. It was it was cool seeing Godzilla on an island setting again in this movie. I, yeah. I I miss that. I like seeing him in the jungles and all that. It's uh we don't I don't think we ever got enough of that in the Heisei movies or any of the movies since the the Showa era. And we get to see Godzilla be a dad in this movie, which shows that he actually cares. But it's way better done. Godzilla. We'll get to Godzilla versus Destroyer. Yeah, and Space Godzilla's design in this, I love. It's a cool design. This yeah. design, and especially like you have his travel is a uh, massive crystal. It looks so good, it's and then so... he like, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it, just looks it crazy. is. Yeah, it's uh... and, and you know he gets there and he transforms and it's just like oh it's Godzilla that has like uh crazy head pieces uh, crystal shoulders. Yeah, he and... looks like something that was created in like the black holes of space. Yeah, and yeah. it's the whole thing is like he's an abomination. It's like a sp- yeah. it's a Godzilla from space abomination, and he looks just like like basically a space god. He's space Godzilla. He looks like Godzilla yeah. from space, and his design is just I don't know. I I think honestly of the Heisei. I mean, just because these two movies just do so much, I think he's probably my second favorite uh-huh. Heisei monster. If the other one didn't exist, this would be like my favorite one. Yeah, this is a this is a fun one. I uh, it's got some really good monster action. There's lots of good uh, monster scenes. Um, it's uh, I remember this is one of I th- I think this was like one of my first exposures to Godzilla. This movie uh, when I was very 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 little. I have brief memories of seeing the end of this movie. Um, but uh, yeah, I I recommend this one. It's it's a lot of fun definitely and i think it gets too much i think it gets too much hate honestly yeah definitely and i would say too it's probably got the best uh g-force cosplay outfits you could ever do um oh yeah the the outfits in this are so good like yeah you just think about g-force after that and then it just gets ruined by stupid hamster movies but like yeah this was 
um, like this was always the thing I thought of in my head of like, oh, what would a Godzilla chompy? And it'd be like, oh, G force. It yeah. just sounds so. It sounds so cool. It does. Like, I love that thing. I wish they had more. They had actual comics about them before. In they Dark did. Horse. Yeah, Dark Horse uh, did like almost like a Power Rangers type thing for G Force. Um, that's a. I do want to talk about those. Uh, I don't know when. That's on comics eventually. Yeah, because I I do plan on reviewing. I don't know when I have them up on the schedule. They might come out before this or after this. But I wanted to review the two Dark Horse Godzilla uh, trades because they're all like sure. they're all from the Heisei era. Um, but yeah, I recommend this one. And uh, do you have anything else to say on a Comron? Uh, check out the poster. <laughs> and yeah, it's the another music really for this good one's poster. also re- the Space Godzilla theme is really dark. Yeah, it's, it's really dark. This feels a lot like uh, the Godzilla versus Biollante. This is the closest one I think we get back to that God- kind of Godzilla versus Biollante vibes. Yeah. Um, so the last one is Godzilla versus Destroyer, and this movie's epic. I will say this is probably my favorite Godzilla movie. Really? This is my, it's, this is the one. Um, it, it is. It, it took me years to decide and it was just, I don't, I think it just, it hit me. It was yeah. just like, this is it. This is the one. This is a great, I couldn't have thought of a better way for them to close out the series. So let me, let me do a plot summary for you guys. The oxygen destroyer and that killed the original Godzilla created some abomination in the water called which are these little like crustacean like creatures called Destroya. And they've been evolving the since their creation. And they finally come in in this movie. And as Destroya come as Destroya um you know comes along to start destroying everything in the movie. Um you have an old pissed off dying Godzilla who's like literally having a nuclear meltdown inside his body. His body is melt. His skin is melting off of him throughout the movie. And you have that. Plus you have his son who, who actually looks like his dad in this movie, which is great. And it's just, I couldn't have thought of a better way to end the Heisei Godzilla series i really couldn't have it's great great music too amazing intro the best intro it's so amazing everything about this movie just makes like chills run up my spine because it's yeah. like it's so poetic that they literally took the weapon that turned him like that killed him and it's like we made that weapon into a monster yes and it's now a what it is monsters plural and they keep evolving. And the it's worse. It's worse than Godzilla. And it's massive. And it's, it's like yes. First, it's it's crazy because we get it on the human perspective first, yeah. where the humans are actually trying to fight them at their own level, and yeah. then eventually it gets too big. It's like alien or something. The way they're trying to go through and fight these things. It's straight up. Yeah, it feels like it feels like they did get yeah. reference to the James Cameron Aliens movie. And like I'll say this: this movie's scary. It it's is. actually it's actually scared me as a kid for a Godzilla movie that says a lot. And the whole thing too is like with Godzilla it's like it wasn't it's uh his radiation it was from Space Godzilla, right? It was like from fighting Space Godzilla this is what occurred. It was like the combo of that and Fire Rodan's power. Something happened, yeah. I I don't remember the uh the reasons that he that he becomes the way he does, but like the island that his home island is gone. It's, he it just from him being there it just yeah, was destroyed and, by his sheer radiation and melts down like a volcanic meltdown into the into the ocean this movie's sad it's got a lot of like dread to it like this is the world is going to end in this movie unless they figure out what to do and it's not even godzilla's fault he literally no. his death is going to be their death yeah it's like they just, die if godzilla dies and he's just dying godzilla yeah. in this movie he's old and this is the it, the crazy part too is like because of all the power and the influx he got from whatever it was i'm pretty sure it was space godzilla like they do mention it in the beginning yeah but he is when the, every time they show him in the water it's just a walking volcano you just see yeah. smoke coming up and he's this is boiling where the, term, the water that's where like all the the whales that are dying in the movie and everything come from and this is burning godzilla this is the godzilla that she it's like no 
the thing is there's no like when you think of godzilla you're thinking of like you know the the blue glowing spikes spikes yeah. and the blue atomic blast that's all it's gone it's just gone yeah. everything is red with fire and even his blast is this like volcanic like energy beam yeah and it's just crazy looking at it and it's like oh my god he's this is the most powerful he's ever been but yeah. the only way to get there is because he is dying and it's it's just so tragic in that sense too but you know you're worried because they're like yeah infinite the island is gone and they don't know where junior and they're calling him junior now like he's just you know, yeah he's, instead of baby like uh you finally see him and he, he's actually like an ad a young adult godzilla like his spikes yeah. are there he looks like godzilla but it's like they haven't grown in all the way yeah but he looks you know it's just it looks great and you know he looks like Mickey. his father for once he looks fully like him it's amazing and i wish uh, they made figures of this dude like they should have figures of him sh um, monster arts yeah but i wish NECA did so i could pay 25 dollars. i know i know <laughs> sh monster arts is like really over sh monster arts really overpriced um yeah, this movie, it's this destroyer looks like the devil. Like he, he looks does. evil, he's... this monster. His the when he rises out of the fire and he's got these giant ass wings and everything, and like and the music, it's just it's so epic, this movie. Yeah, and the crazy thing too is like I think this one takes place in Hong Kong, right? Um, uh the beginning does. He destroys Hong Kong. Yeah, that's what it and uh you know, they're trying to fight destroy the humans are trying to fight and they're like, in one hand, they're trying to figure out how to freeze Godzilla and just stop him from exploding like they, they yeah. figure if they can stop they, they know he's going to die either way. But the whole thing is, yeah. can we save the earth before this happens? And and it's really cool because the characters they bring back Emiko, the original actor and her character in this movie from the 54 Godzilla movie. Yeah, so she's in it and then they she's, have she's revealing the secrets of the oxygen destroyer in this one yeah and then they have the son of uh the kid who is it whose family was killed in the first movie that dr yamani raises yeah that kid he, that always helps him is this yeah he's a college student and everything and it's it's so cool the way they like they really bring all of the previous godzilla movies together in this one and they and, even have Mickey in it as well. I mean, once again, yeah, <laughs> you always have yeah. Mickey, but she plays the role of basically communicating and kind of telling where telling Junior where to go to the point where they're like, destroy is too big, we can't stop him. And they're like, what can we don't even think they're like, we have to send in Junior. And she uses her telepathy to tell Junior to go fight Destroya, which is like yeah. they're like looking at Junior and they're like, I don't think Junior can win. Junior's not big. No, and destroy it it's brutal what he does to junior he like cuts his heart out or whatever it's horrifying like, yeah is it, it is horrifying you've watching this... baby godzilla just get annihilated and especially watching him in the last two movies and you're like oh my god this is this younger godzilla and he's full of like i don't know it's just yeah. it's weird because he's a godzilla where you know you've had this hey say godzilla this whole time and he for the most intense purposes like he just kind of destroys to destroy but yeah. he's overall just kind of neutral. He isn't bad. He isn't good. He's just kind of there. Yeah. Whereas Junior is actually a human friendly Godzilla. Yeah. That is actually like he would be on their side. He actually has a literal connection with humans. Yes. And this is the closest to any of these movies in the entire history of Godzilla. This ever Almost like a King, a King Kong type connection. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Godzilla's Revenge, which was fucking stiff. The movie doesn't and, exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. But this yeah. is, yeah, this is the movie of that. This is that God. This is that monster. This is yeah. Junior. And he doesn't even fight the full version of Destroy yet, but they go huh. head to head. And just Junior actually holds his own, though. He does yeah. well. Until, until Destroy like rips his heart out. Yeah. He like turns into big Destroy and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, and he like yeah, literally Destroyer's like Destroy is evolving. Like it's, he's like Doomsday. You can't kill the kill him the same way twice. And this leads to the best final battle Godzilla movie because spoiler spoiler alert, Destroyer kills baby Godzilla in front of his dad. And yeah, and Godzilla and, gets there the whole time. Godzilla is trying to get to Junior, like the yeah, whole movie to save he's his son. Junior. Yeah, and you get the most pissed off angry godzilla like you see like there's fire coming off of him there's just like he's old he's pissed off he's like this is it the one last time you killed my son and he goes toe to toe with destroyer and he just fucks destroyer's day up 
Yeah, and to the point, though, destroy you look at their size, even like Burning Godzilla is the mm. biggest Godzilla in the Heisei era, the biggest Godzilla to date. Yeah. Um, I don't even, is Millennium Godzilla even as big as him? Uh, no, Millennium Godzilla is the size of the Showa era one. So he's like yeah, so down to his waist. Burning mm. Godzilla is the biggest Godzilla until uh, the only ones bigger is Legendary Godzilla, uh, Shin Godzilla, and uh, the anime, anime Godzilla. Yeah. yeah, only three. Otherwise, the anime Godzilla to me was too over the top. Like, that's that, too that's, big. Like, that's I too am, big, guys. I am literally God. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> is a god there. in that movie. I'm like, <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> That'll be a uh, fun episode. But, uh, um, oh, movies. God. I, I still haven't seen the second two. I've only seen the first one. They get really... Cr- uh, uh, on, it's a, uh, uh, Anyway, yeah, uh, we'll talk about this, this movie. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, he is a massive, but you look at his size, even at his biggest, Destroya is still like... Bigger than exponentially Godzilla. Exponentially bigger, like exponentially. Yes. Which makes and, Godzilla just kicking his ass even more like... Oh, yeah. And he doesn't yeah. at the, in, the, in the beginning, Destroya is still like... Like it's like this because it's like oh my god it's, it's literally a giant oxygen destroyer attacking yeah. Godzilla <laughs> and uh, you do get yeah you get the final iteration of Super X back and pretty much oh, it's yeah. helping Godzilla for, for the most I think in the beginning it freezes him right? they're trying to freeze him so he doesn't like you know destroy the whole planet yeah so. and it like stalls him for a bit but in this point it's like basically helping Godzilla fight Destroya mm. uh, to the point where it even tries to get away and it's just like no and yeah we finally get to that point where like in one hand you had the two human girls one was mickey and they like they're by junior's body yeah and they're like they have to leave and evacuate because godzilla is going to go full meltdown yeah but they're able to freeze him after they kill destroya and yeah and then it the whole idea is like this is heavy shit they're just like if we freeze him this is the right moment japan's gonna be uninhabitable but we'll be able to save the rest of the planet yeah and, and i it, think they still they still stop it either. Like Japan's still habitable after, right? Well, or here's it... what happens. So Godzilla dies. It's a great. It's a heavy scene. Like it's a sad scene. Even the music. Yeah. You see Godzilla like his. It doesn't look like a pleasant death. Like his skin literally just melts off of his skeleton and he disintegrates as all of his radiation comes out. And then they say the radiation levels drop to zero. Something absorbed all the radiation. And you look off into the distance and you see the silhouette of another Godzilla because baby Godzilla absorbed all the radiation and he lives. And the best part too is before he even dies, uh, or before Godzilla dies, you see him go huh. over after he kills Destroy, he goes over to Junior's body and you see like literal like magic, you see right. uh, magic effects go towards uh, to yeah. Junior. Well, no, no, that uh, was right before he sees his son right before he goes after Destroya. Oh, that's what it was? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you get the first hint there. And mm. then you see Junior, and he's like, the, the spikes have grown in, and he's yeah. big. I don't he's, think he's full-grown Godzilla. He's not, yeah, and he's not, he's not burning size, but he's still like a capable size. Yeah, he um, looks, he pretty much looks just like his dad. Yeah. And it's, and it's just a silhouette, and it's a great ending because there's no dialogue, there's no nothing. It's just the shot of him roaring in the distance. Godzilla lives it. on. And then that's it. It's yeah. the end of the movie. And then they they start out. How do you pronounce Akira? What? How do you pronounce his last name? The guy who does the music. Ikafube, I think. Yeah, Akira Ikafube does his best, most definitive version of the Godzilla scene. While they play scenes, they play footage from the original Godzilla movie, the '54 one, all the way up to Destroya, and it is one of the best end credit scenes it makes you feel sentimental yeah i mean also uh, it's like he does the amazing outro and then of course like we talked about we didn't really talk about the intro but the intro is literally the oxygen destroyer being like destroy her. yes <laughs> it's, it's so, so good. good and oh my this God. was a big deal when they made this movie a lot of people forget because even though at the time these heisei movies weren't being released in the united states it made worldwide news that they were going to kill godzilla off yeah like that's a and big deal. They did, yeah. and because this is for all, it, it just became the end. And like I know there are some people like because there was always conjecture when you get Millennium and like it starts up with what two thousand I think. Yeah. Just like oh, is that Junior? And it's yeah. like no, it's just a it's just a restart. Godzilla like, two thousand kind of goes both. It, there's nothing saying that it isn't Godzilla Junior, but there's nothing saying that it is either. It's yeah. just kind of there, and we'll get to that. I. 
I don't think that movie's that great. I I actually do enjoy it a lot, but that's I, I won't lie to. That is the only um bes- that that was the only one I saw in theaters. Oh I yeah, I got to see that in theaters with my. Besides, I mean, of course, besides uh the the uh Paramount one. Yeah, it was it was Paramount, right? Oh, uh, TriStar. Tristar. Tristar did all the American Godzilla releases. Yeah. We'll we'll get to that one. We'll we'll kick the Millennium video off with that one. With ninety eight, okay. Yeah. I actually um, feel like we'll have more to say about that one than a lot of the other movies. <laughs> Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting time because yeah, like it that's a very, it's a it's a very scattered it's a mixed bag era. In millennium era yeah for me because nothing's in constant it, we'll, we'll get to it the next episode yeah. but but anyway, yeah this one this is a must see uh, this is uh, this is the yeah the, and uh, I have my buddy my one of my roommates back at school he got me the theatrical Japanese poster it's and so good I have it and it's so, so beautiful epic. I need to get a new frame for it when I move again but right. the goal is like I'm getting the Space Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla two ones and I'm gonna have right. the it's gonna be beautiful when they're eventually all just side by side there and it'll be like the original prints and they're just gonna be that's gonna be the trifecta of just sheer glory but yeah did, did the uh do you know the original plot for Godzilla versus Destroyer? Wasn't it the ghost of the original Godzilla was coming back? And then King, was, Kong, King Kong was supposed to be in it too. Potentially, yeah. And even yeah. Anguirus. Yeah, uh, King Kong and Anguirus. And the weird thing too was Anguirus was going to be... Uh, the whole thing was Anguirus would either be the villain uh, because Ghost Godzilla would possess him and mutate Anguirus into like almost like a weird winged creature. It was really weird. It's like Anguirus, it's like... Uh, if you ever look at the sketches and designs... Hmm. It, it, he looks like almost like a dog because he's like the knees aren't down anymore it's like that weird thing yeah. uh so he's like they, they call him either like dog anguirus and then there's another one where it's like his back shell actually opens up into like beetle wings yeah oh yeah i know which one you're talking about it was really weird and it's Good like thing they didn't do that yeah it, it, i felt strange because as someone who really loved Anguirus and I just wanted more because, you know, you, you got him he's, in, of course, Raids Again, Gigan. definitely missing from the Heisei era, Anguirus yeah. is. And I wa- I'm like, I want him in the Heisei era. I wish we could have seen him. And they show, they're like, oh, he would have been in Destroyed. I'm like, oh my God, that would have been amazing. Or like that ghost version. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, he would have been like this. And I was like, that's not what I, but that, that yeah. I just wanted Anguirus though. I would have <laughs> minded Anguirus being in this movie as like the last, cause like, you know, the first Godzilla villain showing up in the last Godzilla movie. Um, I wouldn't have minded that. Um, Instead, like said, we don't see him. We don't see him again until Final Wars. And that's a great design too. And I, I and Giros, he never gets enough credit. I think he's yeah. a very underrated, most underrated kaiju out of the Godzilla franchise. For but sure. Anyways, yeah. Must see this. This movie's great. Love it. Definitely. Um, Easily. You got anything else to say, Kamran, before we wrap things up? Um, Just, do, guys, watch these movies. Uh, if you yeah. if you can, watch all seven, just because it's a great just set. Well, I mean, watch the original 1954 and then these ones, if yeah. anything. But, you know, if you need to watch any specific, just watch Bailante, watch the last three. Those are probably the most important ones. And then yeah. uh, check out the music. <laughs> it's so The music good. for these movies is all like They're amazing. So good. Yeah. Um, same same composer as the original 54 Godzilla. He composed them all. So, yeah. Um, anyways, guys, I think that's it. So uh, be on the lookout for our Godzilla melt. We're going to do the Millennium series, which is going to be our next episode. And then after that, it's going to be the Rewa series. And then that's it, right? Yeah, Rewa will be pretty short. And then, yeah, the other one. Because yeah. Rewa, Rewa is going to be the legendary pictures and the anime. Oh, yeah. And Shin Godzilla. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. So, uh, anyways, come on. Where can we reach you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at GoGoComzilla. But, of course, uh, I am the host of Sutra Side Talk, a big uh, channel which has, of course, Sutra Side Talk, a weekly gaming movie TV show news podcast I do. I also got Sutra Side Watch, a bi-weekly uh, movie analysis podcast, and The Cut of Steel, uh, which Danny's on as well, a every two to three week uh, DCEU movie podcast, which we just finished uh, Suicide Squad. So that'll be out, uh, I guess, actually before this, huh? I think about it. Potentially, yeah. it comes out this Friday, so when we're recording. Yeah. But so we'll have... Before that. We'll have all of the movies up to the Whedon Justice League uh, right before Snyder Cut comes out. And then we'll do Snyder Cut after that. But we're just running through all of them. And then uh, up to it, down to it, a 
cool off topic or what the single topic off the rails show where me and some college friends just go crazy. But yeah, you could find that on any podcast platform, really. Great. And uh, guys, make sure you all, you could also find us uh, not only on YouTube, but you can also find us on uh, Spotify, Google podcasts and Apple podcasts. And be sure to check out our website, www.thirdplanet.news. And uh, if you're on if you're on YouTube, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe because we're trying to get to 100 subscribers. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching and take care. So long.